All right, welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks Radio. I'm Jim Hobbs, and on the screen is my carnivore co-host, Brian Damage Foresight of the band Kicks, and Rhino Bucket, and he's wearing his Coffee Talk shirt tonight. Look at that, loud and proud. So, Brian, how's your week been? Ah, it's been flying by fast. I can't believe it's Wednesday already. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's Friday, actually, huh? <laughs> it's flying back faster than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but hey last week you were you were showing everybody that you're into this uh making kefir greek greek yogurt and uh how has the process gone this week and did you already devour what you made or are you making more are you experimenting more well yeah i'm experimenting because i i still haven't found a raw dairy connection <coughs> excuse me uh so um, well, I was telling you before we, we started, uh, I did, I found some raw goat milk through a pet, uh, a raw pet food site that, where I get food for Smokey. So I ordered some, um, goat milk and, uh, it was okay, but it came frozen. So it was kind of, once it thawed, it wasn't quite, the consistency was a little off. Um, but it still tasted good, but I've been doing it. I've just been buying cartons of um, store-bought goat milk in the meantime, and it's working. I mean, it, it'll, uh, it ferments, you know, you put the kefir grains in there and, and let it sit out for like 24 hours or so. And um, it gets that tanginess to it. Uh, but I'd love, I'd love to have it raw because then you get the full benefits of all the, you know, all the, the living bacteria that's in the raw milk. Um, and then, I, well, I think it was, was the last week I showed you the one jar that I had it, but that was the um, heavy cream. I used it. I used it with heavy cream to see how that would turn out. And that's the one that turned out like yogurt is it, it's like thick. It, it's like Greek yogurt. It's really good though. But uh, the other, the goat, the actual milk make it's still drinkable. It's still liquid. Now the other one you have to, the other one you have to eat with a spoon. <laughs> yeah, but haven't you been able to buy like I know you, at one of at one of the local farms that you go to raw cream? They're able to sell raw oh. cream, but they can't sell raw milk. Well, no, the Annie Acres place where I was getting my duck eggs, right? They had they had raw cream, they had raw butter. I was getting that for a while, and then they. Uh, maybe maybe they cracked down on them or something, but um, they informed me that, that they were now uh, doing this low temperature pasteurization, which is you know it's still being pasteurized. So you're they're cooking out the they're killing the bacteria, right? Which is what I want. <laughs> well, I know you and I have talked off the air, and I've kind of joking with you saying you need to get a goat and put it in your backyard. <laughs> and I know you don't want a goat in your backyard. But there has to be somebody within an hour's drive of Tennessee from Nashville that would be willing to have Brian Forsyth's goat on their property so you can get fresh raw milk. And I mean, person that comes to my mind, I mean, Dr. Steve's got 20 acres over there. He can put a couple goats out there. And you can buy, you can stop by Steve's ranch, Rattlesnake Ranch and and. Get you some fresh raw goat milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there. I did find a place. Uh, it's about forty minutes from here, north northeast. Uh, it's a goat. They have goats. It's a goat farm, dairy farm, and uh, I'm I messaged them, but they haven't gotten back to me yet. It's one of those things where I gotta try to hook up with them. But they actually. They they breed goats and sell them. They have these um I forget what the name of them. They're they're some kind of um uh, they're like a little miniature goat or something that they, they uh breed. Well, so if I if I ever did want some goats, I could get it from there. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I think the hard part is finding the goat you want. There's got to be somebody out there who's watching this program that lives in Tennessee that you know that has a big enough yard to be willing to take care of a Brian Forsyth's goat. I, I mean, if, <laughs> if someone's watching this tonight and you live in Tennessee and you'd be willing to house Brian's goat, just put it in the comment section. We'll contact you. Brian will drop off his goat there and 
<laughs> I've never milked a goat though, Brian. I, I mean, I did cows. We used to have cows on our farm, but I never, we've never, Peggy would never let me own a goat because she just thinks they're, they're gross. Um, huh. <laughs> uh, I think they're cute. I like them. I, I, yeah, they got, they, are, they, are <laughs> they got personalities. I like them, but she says they destroy everything, which, you know, probably true. Uh, but I don't know. I, I my mean, cow just uh, a Jersey will allow you just to to milk a Jersey cow. I don't. I can't imagine a goat's. I guess a goat's going to be okay, but you may have to put them in one of those stalls where they can't move around and kick because. They're pretty rambunctious at times. Very pretty, pretty, pretty energetic. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anyone demonstrate how to milk a goat, but uh, the milk is really good, though. Well, uh, I, I, pr I prefer that over cow's milk, actually. I don't think I've ever. Well, I've had goat cheese, so obviously I've had some form of it, some variant of it, but I've never, I've never seen a goat. Well, you've, milk. Well, you've heard of like like the there's two different kinds of dairy, A1 and A2 dairy. Um. No. It has to do with the the type of protein or something the the, the enzymes in the enzymes in the milk or... something but uh, the A two is and you can get that from certain cows but most cows are A one um, but the A two is supposed to be way easier to digest and that's what goat milk is it's goat milk is the, the closest to human milk really us. yeah so it's it's very friendly to digest. <laughs> I'm I'm looking it up as we speak. Goat milk. Yeah, I can look it up too. A1 and A2 dairy. Yeah, I see. So stage one, shop goat milk. So baby's best food. Well, here's a little tidbit. Goats produce about 2% of the world's total annual milk supply. I had no idea. Oh, really? Yes. So there's 10 reasons why you would want to drink goat milk as opposed to cow milk. So there are a lot of benefits with your goat milk, Brian. Mm -hmm. of yeah. Here it explains the A1, A2. It's just, um, they're almost identical. It said the only difference between A1 and A2 dairy um, is a difference in the 67th amino acid in the chain. At this position, A1 has a, uh, God, I can't read. Uh, histidine amino acid while a2 has a proline amino acid hmm. um, and apparently the a2 is the easier digestible but yeah it says here on this but you just said it's number one reason to drink goat milk is that it's easier to digest than cow's milk so sufferers from lactose hmm. intolerance and others who experience difficulties digesting cow's milk may find that goat milk is easier on their stomach. Scientists know that its similarity and composition to mother's milk is the key to explaining why the human body responds better to goat's milk. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah. the goat's milk contains double the amount of positive fatty acids that cow's milk contains. It aids in digestion. If cow milk products disagree with you, doctors recommend switching to goat milk products. And once you make the move, you should soon notice a radical improvement in your areas of discomfort interesting yeah i mean and i can tell like the the heavy cream that i i i fermented when i eat like a spoonful of that i can i can just feel it if i feel heavy in my gut uh the goat milk is complete like i don't it doesn't affect me at all i can i can take a big glug <laughs> of that and and be fine Wow. Yeah. It says goat milk production is on a much smaller scale, so it's easy to obtain goat's milk from small farms where the goats graze freely and they are milked traditionally. The facts leads health conscious people to consider goat's milk a more natural and hence healthier alternative to cow's milk. So there definitely seems to be a lot of reasons backed up by facts of why goat milk would be better. And it also says it helps you lose belly fat quickly. Hmm. Interesting. A so, bonus. <laughs> yeah, true bonus. So when, when when it's uh you know the kefir version of it is really good for your gut. You know it's like a probiotic kind of or a prebiotic. I'm not sure which one it is. 
Yeah, you know, it's amazing. I was telling Peggy, she's, did you tell Brian that I, we used to make that? I said, yeah, but, you know, thinking about it, we never did it with goat's milk. So I can only imagine now. Now you got me wanting to try goat's heavy cream. Um, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to find a farm that has it around here. So, so if you're in Virginia and you have, and you, and you have a goat and I could buy a share of it since it's against the law to sell raw milk, I just want to buy, I want to buy a goat, keep it on your property and, uh, and receive the product of owning a goat there. Does that keep it legal, Brian? <laughs> Uh, maybe, <laughs> but I think that's how I think that's how they get around it is you buy into into you know buy a share, and then then you're sort of on a subscription thing where you just get your milk. You know but, they just they just they opened up a uh, it's called a co-op grocery store. You pay two hundred dollars a year to shop there, um, and it's right in Fredericksburg. Matter of fact, we're it's probably not even a mile from where we all had uh, dinner last or a couple times um, mm -hmm. there in Fredericksburg. And I mean, they're great. They order, they offer a lot of organic products, but they're slanted to vegetarians and vegans. And, but they do offer a lot of like stuff that Peggy and I use in, in our day to day, well, not day to day, but in making keto recipes. So they do offer liquid stevia and they have some you know of the uh the swerve and all that organic so it, it's nice that they do offer some products that we're able to do but you pay two hundred dollars and i don't even know what that really gets you other than to say that you're supporting a co-op that helps promote non-gmo uh organic farming um which i guess is you know, thing. they have they have a place like that in Frederick, but you don't really have to be a member to shop there. But I think you get charged an extra fee or something on, you know, when you check out if you're not a member. Yeah, I think this you can you don't have to be a member to shop at this one either. I think you get an additional 10 percent off everything that you buy if you are a member. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So but I think I might have may have even found I can't remember if I found raw goat milk at the one in Frederick. Or if it was just goat kefir. This was a few years ago I was in there, but uh, I remember getting something goat. <laughs> I think they probably will sell that at this place. I'm going to I'm gonna be there tomorrow, right by it. So I'm definitely going to stop in and see if they have it. Um, yeah, you can find it out in LA, you know, out in California and places. Um, I still have a empty glass, like a quart bottle um that was raw goat milk that i bought somewhere out there maybe it was sprouts or somewhere i forget but yeah it's a bummer that it's uh illegal here in tennessee which you know it's so weird that it is <laughs> yeah it just doesn't make sense that stuff that's i mean you're reading the benefits and why it would be outlawed i mean you know same thing with cow milk though like when we had our own cows we we made everything was we we drank raw milk unpasteurized uh made cheese from it um mm -hmm. there's a big difference uh oh so yeah it there, is. yeah there's a there is a big difference and i mean just it's amazing but then you gotta wonder why they've made it against the law but you know luckily if you own it you can do what you want at least at the moment you can well it's the it's the bacteria phobia you know people think it's bad they don't understand it's there for a reason you know and i guess at some point somebody probably got sick from the milk or something and so the government stepped in and made it illegal which is stupid well i mean the i mean i understand you got people um here i'm looking it up right now it's telling me why raw the federal government banned the sale of raw milk across state lines nearly three decades three decades ago because it possessed a threat to public health. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Medical Association all strongly advise people not to drink it. Now that's, that's I understand you, you know, you can't really um, know how long it's been unrefrigerated and transporting it. So at some point it doesn't have an extended shop, shelf life. But I don't understand why they would strongly advise people not to drink it if you have it and you know you're able to have it. That makes zero sense to me there. Yeah. 
Well, it's the same the same reasoning behind you shouldn't eat raw eggs or you shouldn't eat raw meat. You know, it's, it's that whole thing. And it's like nine times out of 10 or, or probably more than that, the odds are probably even more than that, that you're not going to get sick. Yeah, they're actually saying that the potential downsides and dangers outweigh the possible benefits of drinking raw goat milk. Um, I think it's the other way around. Yeah, well, I'm sure it is. But we also know who puts all this stuff on. So well, I think the thing is too, you know, the human stomach, the the acid pH is like the strongest out of all the mammals. So we're built to to um to handle that stuff, you know. Well, do you, you want to hear the crazy part? So it hasn't been illegal for that long. It 1986 is when a federal judge, Norma Holloway Johnson, I guess made it illegal to sell raw milk. So 1986. Wow. So, Maybe we should petition somebody. <laughs> Try yeah. to get that changed. Yeah. So all these, you know, because look, like you said, you know, they, they don't want you to drink raw eggs. They don't want you to eat raw, I mean, rare meat. They don't want you to have raw oysters, all that stuff. Um, and and I do all of it and I never get sick. So right. Me so maybe it is time that we take back our uh, our power and uh, and start creating a lobbyist for uh, for raw and rare products to be legal again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll blaze a trail. So I know we were talking off air, Brian. We'll switch gears a little bit. But I saw one of your posts earlier. Uh, I don't know if you posted it today or yesterday, but it was in regards to uh, a Dr. Perry. Dr. Perry, Dr. Ken Berry, thinking of somebody else. Dr. Ken Berry was talking about uh, junk food, and uh, at the head of that list was uh, orange juice, which most people consider uh, a healthy morning drink. Um, but I did yeah. not read. I didn't read most the article. People... Yeah, go ahead. What do you have to say about it, Brian? I was just going to say that, that most people do think it's healthy because it's been marketed as healthy. And, you know, when I started getting into the whole nutrition thing and uh, I started noticing things, you know, like you, you'd be at Cracker Barrel and somebody would have this big pancake breakfast and then they'd order the big orange juice to go with it, thinking that they're balancing it out with something healthy when actually they're just adding insult to injury because they're just, they might as well be drinking a soda with their pancakes, you know, uh, and you know, I knew the sugar content was bad, but then when you when you um, you hear about the the process behind it, when you drink a, a fruit juice like that, it, it's highly concentrated. It's like a glass of orange juice isn't just one orange; <laughs> it's right. like several oranges, and you're getting all the juice from those oranges without any fiber involved. It's just pure fructose, and it's going into your it's like your body has no buffer and it goes straight through your liver and your liver has to process all that stuff at once. And that will, uh, I mean, if you keep, if you could drink a glass of orange juice every day, I don't know how long it would take, but you'd end up with fatty liver. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's, there's no doubt that you would, especially the way oranges are grown in this country. Uh, they're, they're just packed with sugar. I mean, they're probably one orange is equivalent to probably a Mountain Dew. I don't know what Dr. Barry, how he compared how much sugar was in an orange, but I know it's a lot. You're, you're... Yeah, I don't know about a, a, just a single orange, but um, I know like a glass of orange juice is is about like a, like drinking a Coke, about the same as a Coca-Cola. But, uh, and that's not even a, you know, that's a normal glass, not, not the large, <laughs> like most people get. They yeah, think well... more is better. <laughs> well, I, 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 they do. And I remember back when my parents would have breakfast, I remember back then you had juice glasses, so they weren't that even that big. There was like two ounces. Yeah. yeah they the little, tiny. yeah, the tiny ones, they had juice, juice glasses. And so, uh, but like you said, when you go to like Cracker Barrel, you got the giant size. It, it, yeah. What is it? Yeah, it's like a huge giant glass that you oh, would drink yeah. a, uh, beer out of or something. So you so you put all that all those carbs for the pancakes and the syrup, and then you drink a a twelve ounce glass of oh, orange awesome. juice, and your sugar and your pancreas and your livers was going working overtime. It's for you. 
Yeah. It's, it's yeah, there's no way it can process all that stuff. No. And and then, you know, like you said, people have been programmed that orange juice is good for you because it's a great source of vitamin C. And so people believe that when they're drinking orange juice or for any fruit drink at that um that of their well, choice. Here's the the other thing is they don't realize it's it's been pasteurized. So all that stuff's cooked out. Then they add synthetic vitamins back into it. So you're not even getting any real vitamin C out of it. And what you absorb is you're not absorbing. <laughs> it, it's just it's just uh, stuff written on a carton. It doesn't mean anything, you know. My mom used to buy the concentrated frozen can. I remember she would take that can and dump it into yeah. the pitcher with water and and that's what became that's what we drank as orange juice. Um Yeah, we had that. <laughs> I think the way I think all people, all parents did back then. That's 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 how they served orange juice. Was that? Well, yeah. Did, did, you ever taste, Min- did you ever taste that before you add the water to it? It's just like this thick syrup. syrup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you take it out of that cardboard like container that it was in, it comes slopping out and just ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> And think about that's what it's doing in your body too. In your body, your liver is trying, and, and your pancreas is trying to, to to break that all down, and and process it for you. And uh, no wonder so many people do damage to themselves by following the American Standard Diet and what they suggest that you have in the morning. And even the crazy part of it, doctors still suggest drinking orange juice, which is just I don't even know how you can can. And a good conscience suggests that to a patient of yours. Yeah, it's uh, just craziness. You know, thank and most people and, and most people just don't know any better, you know. I mean, there's so many people on those posts that I do. They're like, what, really? It's like, you didn't know that? But, you know, they don't. The people don't know. They just sort of take the word for, you know, what they hear. That well, it's good. No, you're right, and, and I'm th- I go keep back going back to that White House nutritional guidelines uh, recommendations, and you think about it. In school, they used to give you in the little cafeteria thing. They they serve you uh, fruit juice, and so you go through public school system thinking that juice is part of being healthy, and you get literally you grow up in the public school system to be a carboholic. And then you start to, I mean, you can, your body's so resilient. So, you know, it's not until you're 30 that you start to receive some of the negative consequences making its way to the surface. And then all that stuff that you've been putting in your body starts to manifest in ways that you don't want to see it manifest. And there's where your diabetes, your fatty liver disease, your high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, um, and some other mental issues, you know, ADHD, all start to to come to the surface. And it's, you know, it's amazing. There's no wonder that, as Dr. Joan Iflin said, that probably 70%, I believe is her statistic, of Americans are walking around with some type of issue. Um, and it's probably based on what you've been programmed to consume in your body And then you go to the doctor to help you be healthy. And, and like that, we just were reading that, uh, I forget the person who wrote to us, but said they had gone to the hospital and they were a hundred and at 167 or 177 pounds. And a week later they checked out at 235 pounds because all the food, the crap, the carbohydrates that they fed them. It's that's just ridiculous under under health care, under being in a hospital where you think that you're should be receiving the best care possible and you leave more unhealthier than when you entered that building. Yeah, it's scary, <laughs> which I know I know we kind of say I kind of say it jokingly at the end of every show, stay out of the hospital. But, you know, deep down, you do really want to stay out of there. Um Unless you have someone who's a true advocate, somebody who does believe in the keto carnivore way of life uh, and thinks outside the box. And there are a few of them. I mean, Dr. Ken Berry's not the only one. As a matter of fact, we were talking about 
some of the people he pays homage to, which was Dr. Atkins, you know, and, you know, in his book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, Medical Myths That Can Harm Your Health, um, you know, if you guys haven't read that book yet, if you watch this program and you haven't gone out and purchased that book from Dr. Ken Berry, you owe it to yourself to get that book, uh, especially if you got kids. You want to read that. You want to be able to share the knowledge that's shared because the knowledge he shares in his own book is from experience, uh, not from being what told to do, but for going ahead and taking the path less traveled by, um, which, as he well, said, like Dr. Atkins, he says to Dr. Atkins, I can't imagine the cold shoulders and stern looks Dr. Atkins must have endured when he initially promoted his book. He was a doctor who thought outside the box and he should be knighted or sainted for shifting the paradigm as much as he did. He was a true revol revolutionary. Um, God rest his soul. And Dr. Barry's following around his, his footsteps. And Brian, yeah, go ahead he, and share your thoughts. I was just going to say, yeah, um, people thought that guy was crazy, Dr. Adkins. Um, they thought he was just a, a wacko. You know, they, they didn't. Yeah, he didn't get any credit back then i mean now people are looking back and seeing that he was on to something but uh yeah and well dr barry you're you're talking about him thinking outside of the box a lot of that stuff too is from his own experience of all the bad advice he had given in the past and then you know looking back at it and realizing that like he was one of the doctors given the bad advice so you know he that there's another way, way that he is um speaking from experience from right. from that other side <laughs> right and and that's what I'm, that's and, and that's the part that that's the balancing act to think that you know people get into the medical profession because they truly want to be able to help people to be able to uh, help those that they love and help those in their community, but they get programmed with the same programming that we all get programmed with, um, and they come out and it's not until they actually are looking in the mirror. And looking at the results that by following those recommendations, which they were taught to follow and not seeing any real change, except for people who go against the grain or, or start to read about people outside of the box, like Dr. Atkins and going, you know what, let me try this, like the Sugar Buster book or the Cholesterol Clarity, all these other books that start to shine light at a different angle on something that we've been taught is bad. But then when you start to implement it in your own life and you start to give hope to other people by, hey, look, try this. Let's just try this and see how your numbers come. And you see the results that it it gives you and gives other people. I mean, I'm I'm definitely proof. I mean, I don't know if anybody saw the picture I posted last week. They popped up as a somewhere. Man, I, feel, I look at that yes. and I cringe. I cringe, Brian. I look back and I go, Man, I looked like I was a harder, a walking heart attack. I looked like I was somebody that looked so unhealthy, and and I was a carbaholic, no doubt about but, it. Go ahead. But but you know now you can look back at that. I mean, you're not there anymore, which is that's the blessing, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, oh oh definitely. I mean, Peggy said that. Peggy's like, gosh, I can't. She's it scares me that we look like that, or especially you, like. And yet, we're not those people. Those people have died. Those two human beings that were living off, off the carbs are dead. But you know what's crazy, Brian? More people worry about me now the way that oh, I yeah. than worried <laughs> about me the way I looked back then. I mean, that's the crazy part. That's how people are. That's how, yeah. that's how backwards people think about food, you know? When yeah. Yeah. I had someone uh, comment on that post and who's a, who's a great friend. And, uh, and saying, hey, I, you know, I love your pictures, but I worry about your cholesterol and your arteries and your particles in your arteries. And I was like, hey, look, I actually suggested reading the Dr. Uh, Dr. Ken Berry book. I said, look, once you find out that most of the stuff that you've been programmed to believe in, I'd be all freaked out about how I eat, too. But once you find out that that's bought by big pharma or big food or the tobacco companies who own all of them. Uh, you realize where the real programming is coming from and the people who are like Ken Berry or uh, 
Dr. Atkins blazing a trail to what's possible if you don't follow that American standard diet and eliminate the stuff that's really the true drug um, in America, which is sugar. I mean, if there's one thing that could be eliminated out of America that should be outlawed, it should be just sugar. And right. uh, it, and Brian, you posted a post, didn't you? Like we talked about this before, but the way that the food companies get away from you believing, oh, this doesn't have sugar in it, the, the, the 200 different names they give sugar or the different – uh, wait. And, that's, and that wasn't even all of them. There's still more that could be added to that list. Wow. But so, that's, yeah, that's how they get around it. It's like, and and it's funny because I did that post and sometimes I'll just throw something up there and not expect a whole lot of reaction, but you'd be surprised how many people like they'll go, oh, you know, half that stuff I thought was okay. Like they didn't even know that it was sugar because it's worded in a way that makes it sound like it's something health healthy. <laughs> And, you know, it's the same food companies are like that. They'll just trick you and get around it and in any way they can to make you think it's healthy. And well, in the marketing, you know, it's, it's all this. And if you don't know anything about it, you, you can be tricked into it, you know, <laughs> very easily. Well, that's the scary part because they don't care how they get it to you. And so, you know, you said something that, I think people need to really take time to hear what you said, because if you then think it's just the set of you read the book Sugar Buster and you don't plan to have any sugar. And so you're making you're looking at the labels, but you don't know that the hundred other ingredients that are in that label are really just a different name for sugar. That's going to cause the same results for you as if you just had sugar um, and you think you're doing well. And, you know, that could literally explain why some people who say, well, I've gone keto, I've eliminated sugar, but I'm still not feeling any better and I still haven't lost any weight. Um, it very well be that that you just don't know that you're still consuming sugar. You're just doing it under a different name because they've got that sneaky and, and how to be able to trick you. Um, well. The, the safest way around that whole situation is to eat real food and not buy something that's prepackaged or processed in any way, you know, no, the natural form, the, the, the root of the food that they're trying to sell you. Cause they're, that's just a, a manufactured version of it. Yeah. If we could, if we could get away from eating processed food and I know we're, a nation that's always on the go and 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 that's why fast food restaurants are so prevalent here in the united states um you know and i feel bad every time i drive by a chick-fil-a because there's always a double line around the chick-fil-a's they have two drive throughs now and and, there, and it's always wrapped around the building every time i drive by it doesn't matter which one i drive by here in right. Virginia. there's always a line but always you know what I can safely say I've never stepped foot in one of those places, but, and then all their stuff. Have you ever seen the ingredients of their stuff? Yeah, they're, well, they, they're, I mean, oh. as much as they have a good reputation for being a great company and caring for people, if you knew the science behind what they created, it's no different than the tobacco companies. They found the magic formula of fat. And, and, and so they, that's why those people that are double line around the building, are addicts to that fat they're, yeah they're lined up at the drug dealer's house <laughs> yes that's exactly what it is they 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 are addicts and because eating chicken has been programmed to believe that we're eating good they don't tell you what type of chicken's good but and they yeah and, and everything that's packed on top of it and what it's fried in it cancels out any any amount of good that there is left in that yeah <laughs> It's 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 really so backwards, and yet we wonder why we are a, a society that is obese and has cancer and diabetes are at record numbers, or cardiovascular disease, or high blood pressure. Alzheimer's. Yeah, well, you know what? And that really is. I mean, I never you rarely heard anyone having Alzheimer's or um, what's the other one very similar to it? Um, Dementia. Yeah, thank you. Dementia. I probably got early stages of that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that really is like the type three diabetes is what all those are. And it's I truly believe it's based on 
what we consume. And it seems like to me, it's such a racket. I can't go to a grocery store anymore that doesn't have would you want to donate to the cancer society? And I'm not bashing the cancer society because my gosh, I hate cancer. But I also think we are feeding the American public exactly what causes the cancer. So while you think you're doing good, you'd be doing really good if you did not eat processed food and would go to, you know, what's been given to us to eat meat, eggs, and raw dairy. Uh, and, and and raw goat milk, uh, all those are, are are great ways for for us to be able to take back control of our health. But we're never going to the fact that we've given our choices away to people who don't have our best interests at heart. All right, it's that time of the evening where we check in with Mr. Brian Schenker of the Meat Tribe, who we missed last week. So Brian, what? deals do you have for us this week i've got a few good deals for you this week so we're going to start off a little bit different we're going to go with kroger they have a deal running through the fourth they've got some choice grade whole briskets for 2.99 per pound not as good as we've seen it there but still not bad i have yet to see brisket that low up here in maryland yet or virginia um, yeah so um, and that's the only one. But uh, Food Lion, they've got a few deals running through the fourth as well. They're all choice grade. They're all boneless. Uh, they've got some top round London broil, which I just um, reverse seared. Uh, I, I smoked it for a couple hours till it got to 115 degrees. And then I um, then I seared it on my grill, my gas grill. Um, I cooked it a little more than I really wanted to, but it was pretty good. But uh I'm going to go pick some more of these up. There was uh, $3.99 per pound at Food Lion. Um, they have some ribeyes on sale for $9.99 per pound, and they've got some stew cubes for $5.49 per pound. Next up, Harris Teeter. There we go. I'm going to make up for missing last week's podcast. Yeah, here the we go. The ribeyes <laughs> the rib are on sale. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and still holding at those good prices. So the rancher grade value pack is seven ninety nine per pound. Wow. The rancher grade small pack is eight forty nine per pound, and the choice grade is eight ninety nine per pound. Hmm. So I'm gonna get some tomorrow for sure. But they've got a few other deals too. They're really making up for not having a lot of deals. They've got you'll like this. They've got some eighty percent lean ground chuck for two ninety nine per pound. That's good. They have some choice grade bone in short ribs for $7.99 per pound. And they have some choice grade boneless short ribs for $9.99 per pound. And then they've got, this was kind of an interesting deal. I don't know how good it really is, but they have a one pound brisket roast for $7.99 per pound and a one pound brisket flat for $7.99 per pound. pound. That to me seems like that's really small. Yeah. Yeah, that's really <laughs> That's really small. Yeah, I don't think that's a good deal, especially when you can. Uh, well, Brian can go to Kroger for two ninety nine and and get the brisket for two ninety nine. I mean, yeah, big seventeen pounder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah. So I'm gonna skip those one pounders, but the ribeyes, I'm going there tomorrow. I'm picking my own out of the butcher case. I'm not gonna go for the pre previously uh, wrapped ones. That's the way I'm to gonna go. pay. And I'm going to pay attention to which ones he picked because uh, last time when he gave me the two out of the case, one was not really cut very well. Um, but uh, there you go, guys. Some good ribeye deals. Those those are some good prices. Thank you very much, Harris Teeter. You are my favorite. Uh, uh, Kroger, would, Kroger would be good, but they're just not here. So Yeah, it's yeah. too far. Well, they've actually had all their steaks have been on sale for the last couple of weeks. Not not as good as that, but uh, eleven what is it eleven ninety nine? Eleven ninety nine, yeah, yeah. But two ninety nine for a brisket—that's cheap. I mean, I don't see the cheapest here, and that's at Costco is five ninety nine. Uh, yeah, most of the time in the stores, it's it's way past five ninety nine. So that's a that's a really good deal. All right, there, Mister Shanker. We appreciate the good news that you've ushered in here with fall, and uh, we will see you next Friday night. Sounds good. Take care. All right, take care. The best thing you can do for yourself and for your family is to educate yourself. 
go outside the box. Don't go out, go outside the studies that are bought for by the big food and big pharma. You know, find people like Dr. Ken Berry or or many of others. Follow Brian for crying out loud. It, there's <laughs> There's the headbanger keto guy too. And uh, there's so many others out there. Who do you got, Brian? You got somebody else you're thinking about? Oh, no, I was, I was Googling something. I was going to say, uh, is it gly glyphosate is the, um, the pesticide, right? Right. That they spray on everything that, that they're finding has um, that contributes to dementia and Alzheimer's as well. And, and the, uh, and that's in everything, including kids' cereals, because it's in all the grains. Um, and it's got, it, it can, uh, the chemicals in that can cross the blood-brain barrier and get into your brain and cause problems up there. What's the other one they spray on everything, the plant uh, crops? Uh, there's another one, Mesa, mes. Mm, well, glyphosate is the, or glyph glyphosate. Oh, I can't remember. I get that backwards. But uh, that is the uh, the Roundup stuff that they use. Yeah, they Roundup. Use. That's it. Yes, that's it. Yes. That's what that, that's the, okay. that's the brand name of it. Yeah. Made by Monsanto. Well, see, that's who I'm thinking of. And those people all, I mean, they control that whole market. Almost every farmer in America that's not an organic, non-GMO sprays that on their crops, which just makes me sick. It gets in the air. It gets in the ground. It gets in the water. It kills everything. It kills yeah. all the healthy bacteria in the in the soil. It's just, um, and now it's they're finding out it's killing people's brains. You know. Yeah. Well, it all you know. It, so if you're digesting food that was grown in that type of soil and it's killing all the good bacteria in that soil, that's exactly what it's doing to your gut biomes. It's killing all your good bacteria as well. And so there's no wonder people are getting sick at the pace they're getting sick at. Listen, the best thing you can do is educate yourself. Be careful what you put in your body because you do control that part of the process. And so don't become an addict if you have. I mean, I look back at those pictures and I became an addict and I literally ate my way through the day. And <laughs> and now I eat once every day in a four hour window, um, drink water and am just so thankful that uh, I was able to break that addiction to that processed food and to that cycle because I understand how hard it is. But I do know this, once you break it and you experience true life, um, you're never going to want to go back to that lifestyle ever again. I know I'm so thankful that I can, I'm not even tempted by driving by a Chick-fil-A. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have, I'm going to have, a. am just in the mood for a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Nope. Just not in me anymore. I just know what it is. It's poison. Um, so anyway. Yeah, it's funny because I, you know, on Facebook, you know, how you get those memories that pop up. Right. Um, this past week, I remember seeing one from like 10 years ago and it was a plate of food or something I was eating. And I'm like, you know, it just reminds me of how, how not that long ago I was eating like unhealthy stuff, you know. But, you know, the thing is, you didn't even think you were eating unhealthy stuff back then. I mean, you, the bottom. No, I, I, I did. I always thought I was pretty. Well, I was always fairly healthy, but you know, even then, because I didn't know any better, I, I was eating stuff that wasn't that I didn't wasn't aware that was not healthy, but I was still eating all the sugar and the sweets. So <laughs> that's definitely not healthy. <laughs> well, let's talk about something that is healthy. And uh, that's for people listening to music and being able to go out and, and enjoy a kicks concert. So Brian, where are you guys playing this weekend? We're in La Plata, Maryland. Uh, what is that? festival called oh i should know this stuff <laughs> uh, it's, it's called, keep your fingers crossed and hope the hurricane doesn't hit southern maryland this weekend festival yeah wait here it is oh it's called uh, rock rocktoberfest that's what it is okay i knew it was something like that but it's yeah it's, it's outdoor so we're praying hey everybody needs to come out to that kick show saturday night because somebody tonight it's the night right friday night it's your birthday is it friday night the 30th yeah yeah there you go hey everybody bring brian your favorite piece of meat uh 
Oh yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna. Uh, I was kidding him earlier, saying we were everybody bring carrot cake, but no, no, I don't want you to, to tempt him. Everybody bring bring him a a, a turkey leg, a uh, a ribeye steak, prime rib. You know, stop by Five Guys in a bowl, drop it off, make a donation on the stage. Instead of putting beer <laughs> bottles all up on the stage, have a bunch of Brian Forsyth damage bowls up there with hamburger, bacon, cheese. And uh, yeah, let's, but let's I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fly home the next day so I can't eat too much. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, hey, happy birthday, Brian. Isn't this is like the kicks? Who's doesn't Mark Sh Mark Shanker had one? Is it yesterday? Yeah, Mark, Mark is 28th, uh, Bob is the 29th, and I'm the 30th. So, yeah, that is crazy. I, I knew it was a and, trifecta, and my older brother was the 27th. Yeah, so. September is a is is a birthday month for kick. So yeah, come on out, celebrate with the guys on Saturday night. I, I have a feeling it's going to be raining, but if you don't mind standing in the rain, uh, come on out. <laughs> there you go. And you guys have a good show. Bring an umbrella though, unless you guys are going to be selling your kicks umbrellas at the uh, merch stand or a poncho. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever keeps you dry, everybody. Yeah. And Brian, we've talked a lot of things tonight. But what's one bit of advice that you would give somebody who's watching this program, made it all the way through, that could change their life and bring vitality to it, just like it's brought you? I would say eat your meat. Yes, you would. And I would second that. Hey, everybody, thanks for spending a Friday night with us. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week in the interim. Stay safe, stay well, stay kind, and stay out of that hospital. We'll see you next Friday, everybody. Mm -hmm.